So, hello and welcome to the Light Reading Podcast, Extreme Automation and Autonomous Operations to Support 5G. My name is James Crawshaw and I'm joined today by Yogan Patel, who is a marketing executive with Amdocs. Welcome, Yogan. Thank you, James. So we're talking about extreme automation. We're talking about 5G. And what I'm curious to hear, Yogan, is what, what exactly is it about 5G that's going to need a higher level of automation than we already have with 4G? You know, is it something to do with uh, network slicing? We keep hearing about that and all the sort of fantastic customized services for different industrial users that that's going to enable. Um, or is it about simply the complexity that 5G brings? We've got this new radio, we've got this new core. Um, does that require some higher level of automation? Or or, or is it just you know simply the fact that the that the telecom industry continues to be un, under a lot of pressure? There's a lot of competition, and so uh, the operators just need to continue to find new ways to take out cost in order to sustain and, and possibly improve profitability. What do you see as the as the big driver for, for automation with five G? So so when you look at five G, there's automation that's going to be required along two dimensions uh, around deployment and provisioning, that's dimension one. And then automation is going to be needed around assurance and operations, which is the second dimension. Now, this is the case because as you look forward to the evolution of 5G and the deployment of 5G, these networks are going to be fundamentally re-architected networks. Obviously, the focus right now is on new radio, but it's going to eventually evolve to the edge and to the core and we're going to move from monolithic physical closed network to a distributed virtualized open cloud network. And on top of that, you're going to have new capabilities like network slicing. Uh, so when you think about the promise of service innovation that 5G brings, there's also a lot more complexity coming in, many more moving parts, many more pieces of technology. It's going to be a multi-vendor network. All of this needs to work in a harmonized manner, which cannot be done effectively nor efficiently using today's methods. This is why you know, a much higher degree of automation is going to have to come in as we look at 5G for both aspects, you know, deployment provisioning, assurance and operations as well. Hmm. Okay, interesting. And um, do you think that operators have got the sort of tools that they already you know, that they need for this automation? That they're getting those from the the traditional sort of radio access network suppliers? You know, things like um, self, SON, self organizing networks. Um, do they do they meet this need, or or are there some sort of gaps that need to be addressed to make you know the whole mobile network management more efficient? So I think the, the SON tools of the past, which in some cases have unfortunately got a bad rap, have been very tactical and limited, and there is going to be new tooling required, primarily because the RAN is going to change quite radically in the coming years. So there's really three dimensions of changes happening within the radio access network. The first is disaggregation. So the functions like the radio versus the BBU, and even within the baseband unit of all the different components and functions are going to get disaggregated out. And so you'll have situations where there'll be shared processing maybe at a local node serving multiple radio sites. So that's change number one. The second change is going to be virtualization of the RAN functions, where as the RAN gets disaggregated, some of those functions are going to be run on white box hardware. And the third change is going to be opening up of the interfaces where you have multi-vendor components across the RAN versus the current monolithic closed single vendor RAN model we have today. So all of this is going to require a new set of automation tools to manage the RAN. Now, existing tool sets have, they have, we have today, some of those may be applicable, but clearly a much more enhanced and rigorous approach to service resource and network management is going to be needed, especially given all these changes that are going to happen within the RAN domain that I just described. Mm, okay. Well, I, <clears throat> I'm, I'm here in London, and this week we've been uh, having a conference, a 5G World, as part of London Tech Week. And uh, and alongside the 5G World show, there's also an AI show, which is talking about the application of artificial intelligence to, to multiple industries, not just telecom. But but there is a, you know, a lot of interest in, in telecom about how AI and machine learning can be brought to bear to to help make mobile network operations more efficient. Is it is it just hype, Yogan, or or are you seeing some real tangible benefits here? 
No, no, there's real opportunity, James. I mean, there's like service providers absolutely have an opportunity to tap into AI and ML to make network operations more efficient, mainly because they actually have access to the critical ingredient, which is data. There's vast amounts of network data that they have access to. And in fact, I've seen examples of forward-thinking service providers already applying AI and ML in two specific use case areas. One is around network optimization. So here, you know, they're able to acquire data in real time uh, and look at the network quality, you know, they run these algorithms on the data, looking for patterns within the data to see, you know, where are anomalies happening and be able to react to proactively fix them before customers are negatively impacted. So that's one area of use cases that I see. The other one is all around predictive maintenance, where you can look at the historical data, mine that data, again, run advanced algorithms to get insights that give you a sense of uh, an information on the state of the equipment and failure prediction based on historical data. So now all of a sudden, you can look at the historical data and start making forecasts and predictions on failure rates for things like hardware in a cell tower or power lines or data center servers and become much more proactive in servicing and fixing those network technology and network pieces before failures occur. So real-time network optimization and predictive maintenance are two very good use case areas for using AI and machine learning. Mm, interesting. What about um, you know something more prosaic like uh, field service operations? Do you see operators being able to to take advantage of it there? Maybe to help with the the scheduling of of workers or making sure that uh, I don't know they they had the right kit in the van in order to to do a job. So, so that's one part of predictive maintenance where you right. can use that in order to do that exactly like you said. But there's probably a couple of other areas where field operations can be impacted by uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, one is virtual assistants, where here maybe you simply have end users be able to service themselves directly through the use of bots and virtual assistants through self-service interfaces. Uh, maybe virtual assistants can be a tool that first-line technicians who don't have the depth of knowledge can utilize to help them remediate or fix issues. Another area is robotic process automation, where there's a lot of repeatable tasks that get done in network operations or network assurance where you can apply you know, automation using RPA tool sets to mechanize and automate those. So when you think under the umbrella of AI, there's many different things that could be done, including, as I mentioned, optimization, predictive maintenance, virtual assistance, and RPA. All of these will impact field service operations and network operations. Yeah, interesting. Interesting you mentioned uh, RPA, robotic process automation. That was, um, I wrote an article about an interview with uh, CenturyLink recently, talking mainly about how they're applying AI to their operations, um, which obviously aren't mobile related, but um, they are obviously running big networks. Um, and uh, and they saw a lot of opportunity for robotic process automation too. Um, and uh, you know that's that's I thought that was quite interesting. Other operators, yeah, there's could, hundreds, yeah, there's hundreds yeah. and hundreds of repeatable tasks these network operations teams need to do, which can all be automated fairly quickly with the right application of these sorts of tools, for sure. Mm, interesting. Okay, so um, the sort of the holy grail for automation is uh, is what we, we we refer to as closed loop. So, you know, that the the feedback you get from your network monitoring and service assurance systems is is going into some central brain, and that's deciding what changes you need to make to the, the configuration of your network in order to to have it all run smoothly. Um, and but what what did operators need to to get to that sort of whole closed loop experience? Is it about becoming more sure and confident in the service assurance systems and their ability to detect problems and 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 identify if a customer experience is is not quite up to scratch? What what's the key? Do you think? So I think the key is going to be around thinking about assurance in a different way. Meaning there's going to have to be a different approach to how assurance is managed. Uh, policies for assurance would need to be defined up front at the time of designing the service, meaning just as we specify the provisioning parameters in order to fulfill a service, the assurance policies are on ensuring that end-to-end -end service should be designed up front. And there should be an understanding of what the service intent is 
and what needs to be done to deliver that service intent. So what you then have to do is make sure that your break-fix orchestration and remediation of issues is keyed off of fulfilling the service in- intent versus the current model, which is bottoms up right now. So today's model is events occur, some sort of correlation is done, a network t- technician tries to figure out what is being impacted and then make some ad hoc priority call to fix it. The approach in the future is going to have to be top down, where as you define and design and deploy a service, you're in parallel defining, designing the assurance policies that are around ensuring service intent, and then making sure that these are connected to the break-fix mechanism. So you have a holistic end-to-end approach to design, monitoring, assurance, and orchestration, and all of these things are speaking the language of service intent, and that's when you'll truly realize closed-loop operations. Mm, okay, interesting concept. Um, okay, let's um, let's shift gears slightly and talk about one of the big one of the big beasts in the open source world for telecom operators, and that is the um, the very famous ONAP project. Um, and uh, yeah, that that that's obviously something that uh, a number of operators around the world, Chinese operators, AT and T, um, Bell Canada, Orange, they're all quite interested and in, and in, and excited about. Uh, and other operators are, are watching keenly. Um, how, if at all, can can ONAP help with five G automation? In a big way. So so if you think about the evolution of five G. You know, as we move from the non-standalone, which is simply, you know, existing radio, I mean, new radio on existing core, to sort of the future world of standalone, we have full re-architected, you know, edge and core networks. A lot of that is going to be based on virtualized software-defined components spanning that entire network. And so you're going to need the tool sets to support that virtualized infrastructure and orchestrate and manage it. And this is exactly where ONAP comes in. ONAP is indeed a clear leader in this whole area of network automation as it relates to virtualized tool sets and cloud infrastructures. And so as 5G core networks get evolved with the standalone architecture arrival, ONAP will be one of the key technologies you know, utilized, fulfilled, and leveraged in managing the automation uh, and automating you know, all the aspects of handling these new re-architected networks in the future. So mm. clearly a leader in the in the in the in in the domain today will become even more so and more relevant as 5G networks evolve here in the coming years. And Amdocs of course has been involved in that project pretty much from the start, right? From the beginning, was, yes. Yeah. Yeah. The history of ONAP was a, a project called Ecomp that AT and T led. We were a co-partner with AT and T in that in that project, and then when it got turned over to the open source community, we've continued to contribute heavily towards uh, pieces of the ONAP stack. Great. Well, Yogan, I thank you for your time. It's been uh, it's been an education. We've been talking about extreme automation and autonomous operations to support five G. I've been James Crawshaw, analyst with Heavy Reading, and uh, and Yogan Patel. Marketing executive from Amdocs. Thank you very much for your time, Yogan. And uh, Thank you, with that, yeah, great. With that, we'll sign off. Thanks so much for listening. Mm-hmm.